Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report. Coming up here on today's show, Roderick Teamer replacements. Exactly. You want to know why we're the number one most watched Raiders show in the world? Because we do shows around Roderick Teamer replacements. Now, I'll tell you this. During the holiday season, I look like a fat bearded dad. Even though I'm a single guy, no kids, right? Or single dad, no kids. Either way, I don't know what it is. Shout out to Panda Subs. We're always hooking up with the nation here. Use code FKC for 20 off. All you got to do is go to pandasubs.com. Make sure that you use code FKC because even though the Raiders lost to the Chiefs, it's still FKC week as far as I'm concerned. Let's get in now to the latest here around Teamer and why we're doing this show. So the Las Vegas Raiders, they cut Roderick Teamer and Marcus Peters on Monday. Though with Teamer, he was out partying sa Sunday night or Saturday night leading into Sunday morning was speeding, got pulled over, got a DUI. They made him a healthy scratch, was unable to go, which is frustrating because that was right when Teamer got activated off the IR. But as it stands right now at the time that I'm making this video, November 28th, the Raiders have two open roster spots. And as it stands right now, the Raiders have $9 million in salary cap space with five games left to go, six weeks including the bye. And when you think about what that bye represents, yes, it's a time for you to be able to get healthy, but it's also a really good opportunity for you to be able to go out there and potentially add another player to your team to give them that extra week of practice, give them that extra week to get them acclimated because the Raiders stretch down the end of the season. If you want to keep your job, Antonio Pierce and Champ Kelly, for next season, you got to do everything in your power, and that might mean finding a free agent at the safety position. Over the past four seasons, Teamer's been essentially just a special teams guy, whether he's been playing for the Chargers or where he's been with the Raiders the past two seasons. And he's a decent safety in terms of depth. And losing him is going to impact the Raiders in some way or another. Whether that's going to be as a special teams ace. Whether that's going to be on the defensive side of the football. And I don't really ask this question often. So I figured I'd go with this spin here. I want you to rate the severity of the Raiders cutting Roderick team. Or like, is it a big time deal? Like, it's really, really going to hurt this team. Then it's a 10. If you're like, honestly, dude, Roderick team or who? Then it's a 1. Scale it for me down below 1 to 10. Rate the severity of the Raiders cutting Roderick Teamer. My answer on this one is it's a 3. It's going to hurt the defense in terms of overall depth. I mean, let's not get it twisted. He was a player that made the 53-man roster that this Raiders team was relying on to just fill in for a few snaps here and there. But where he's really going to be missed I think is more on the special teams aspect the Raiders are going to be able to replace them it's not a major major loss it is a little bit of a loss and I'm hoping with some of the players that I have coming up here on the show you'll forget about Roger Teamer really really quickly so coming up here on the Raiders report again sponsored by Panda Subs I have Roderick Teamer replacements and we'll talk about some of the top safeties that you could potentially look at on practice squads and you could look at just on the free agent market but any time that a player goes down, if you're a head coach, or a good head coach, I guess I should say, or a good defensive coordinator, you're also going to look at the players that you have within your roster. So we'll look at some of those guys. At first, though, we have probably over 6,000 subscribers in the last month, and I know the closer and closer it gets to the end of the season, people are always wondering, well, why should I subscribe to the Raiders Report? Not only do we do content during the entire regular season, we do content every single day in the offseason. In the offseason... I'm live at least twice a week. Videos every single day, sometimes videos multiple times a day. We're an interactive YouTube channel. So I see my guy El Loco Uno. Shout out to Fat Bearded Dad, Mr. OG Raider, Cloud. I have a lovely bunch of coconuts, all of them. 100% free, more subs equals more videos. And if you don't like the content, you can hit unsubscribe. It costs you absolutely nothing. Some of our loyal watchers, if you're like, why should I subscribe? Ask these people. C. Schaefer, Kenny Mack, Michael. Dead Raider, Jay Sr., a bunch of OG Raiders Report watchers here. You don't get to 156,000 subs unless you have an unbelievable group of people that we like to call family here. And that's what the Raiders Report is. It's an amazing family. So as it stands right now, this is what the Raiders' safety depth chart looks like. You have Marcus Epps. You have Trevon Merrig. And Epps, unfortunately, had to leave the game against the Kansas City Chiefs with a little bit of a shoulder injury. So... You might even need to add a little bit of extra security in case, you know, Epps is unhealthy, Trevon Merrick's unhealthy, and you have Chris Smith and Isaiah Palomeo. To me, Isaiah Palomeo got to be ready to go. Like, depending on the severity of Marcus Epps' injury, which we still have not gotten really any clarification on yet, 
Palomeo is going to get his opportunities. He's a box guy in terms of safety. He can play a little bit of linebacker. The Raiders like his versatility, and that's something that this team is absolutely going to look for. The other option is this, Christopher Smith, who really hasn't got much work, drafted in the fifth round out of Georgia, a good leader on that Georgia defense. I mean, considering the fact that that's arguably one of the best defenses that college football has ever seen, and Chris Smith was one of the captains, one of the leaders on that. Are we going to see a little bit of work from him? To me, the way that the guys play defense, Chris Smith plays defense a little bit closer than what Roderick Teamer did, though I do think Isaiah Palomeo is a more versatile athlete. Then, if you really want to bring in an extra guy for depth, you could look at Jaden Grant. He's on the practice squad. I had to just throw this one out there because he is currently on the Raiders practice squad, and you know what the practice squad means to Antonio Pierce. He believes that every single guy on that squad should be suiting up on game days because they're going out there, they're practicing. Now, if you don't want to go that route, I do think another option that the Raiders could potentially do is instead of you relying on an extra safety, could you potentially rely on an extra corner? And, you know, the fact that the Raiders moved on from Marcus Peters could be a little bit of an issue because you're thin here at the cornerback spot. Maybe Amik Robertson, Nate Hobbs is the player that I would say if they had to drop back and if they wanted to do an extra safety, Nate Hobbs would probably be the player that they would ask to do it because then they could just put Tyler Hall in at the nickel slot spot. I don't know if you're going to see Brandon Faison. I don't even know if Brandon Faison knows whether or not you're going to see him play this entire season. Now, we still got some names that are coming up here on the show in terms of I have five free agent safeties that I believe that the Raiders should at least pick up the phone, give them a call, and say, hey, what are you doing? You want to be a, you want to be a Las Vegas Raider? But before I get into that, today's show is presented by Panda Subs, and Panda Subs is run and operated by a diehard Raider fan, and he's been a proud sponsor here on this show, man, for about two years. So if you want to support him, I know he would definitely appreciate it. Hell, that's why he's giving us the code FKC for 20% off. All you got to do is go to the link down in the comments and in the description, pandasups.com, code FKC. If you have a sweet tooth like me, the best protein that I have ever had, and I mean this, man, I don't say this stuff lightly and anybody that follows me on social media knows the only workout supplements I have the only protein that I have is from Panda Sups and they just dropped two new ones it's almost going to taste too good to be true 30 grams of protein it's going to curb your appetite 140 150 calories per scoop it's the best protein I've ever had hands down and then if you're also like me where sometimes getting up in the morning especially when it starts to get cold I take Chuck for a walk. I don't really have a problem getting up early in the summertime, but in the winter, man, it's cold. Then I got to go to the gym. An easy way to get yourself motivated, you take a scoop of some Sinister. I'll be real with y'all. If you're not great with caffeine, I would even recommend taking a half a scoop. Hell, sometimes Alex takes a quarter scoop because that's how strong this pre-workout is, and I don't want you to get that burning ants feeling where it's crawling all over you. Bottom line, if you're trying to get into better shape during the holiday season, Go to pandasups.com, use code FKC for 20% off. That way, I would just be a bearded dad, not a fat bearded dad. So coming up here, I got my free agent safety targets. They are not ranked in any particular order. It's more of a why I believe it makes sense for the Raiders to go out and target each of these players. The first guy on the list is actually not even a free agent. He's on the practice squad. So that means if the Raiders were to go out and if they were to sign Deron Harmon they can't put him on the practice squad they would have to activate him right away and put him on the official 53-man roster and as far as I'm concerned I think that the Raiders should add Deron Harmon like today I, I don't understand why they wouldn't do it because Harmon yes he's currently on a practice squad he was great I mean phenomenal in Patrick Graham's system last year and sure a lot of people are like oh well Harmon Patriot guy McDaniels guy Ziegler guy Throw that out the window. Harmon was a great, great leader in this secondary. Harmon was one of the lone bright spots in that secondary last season. And to me, if you have Marcus Epps, you have Deron Harmon, you have Trevon Merrick, that kind of takes away the Marcus Peters aspect. Like if I'm running the Raiders, the first thing that I'm doing is, you know, maybe we decide to go with three safety look, which is starting to become more popular with certain NFL teams from time to time. But I'm going to go a three safety look and put Deron Harmon, Trevon Merrick, Marcus Epps all out there on the field at the same time. That's going to take pressure off some of your corners that, let's face it, I have hopes in Jack Jones. I got hopes in some of those younger guys and a Tyler Hall and a Meek Robertson. 
But Deron Harmon showed you that he could play at a very high level just last season in this Patrick Graham defense. And now that you got Marcus Epps playing the way he's playing, now you got the way Trevon Merrick playing the way that he's playing, to me, Harmon makes a lot of sense. Uh, last season, according to PFF, he had a 72.3 overall grade, but it's the coverage grade. He showed that he can be a reliable safety in coverage, and I'm sorry, not even I'm sorry, the reason why the Raiders wanted Marcus Peters, and this one's more of a combo between Marcus Peters and Roderick Teamer replacement. Harmon can cover. He could still do it at a high level. Yes, maybe it hasn't gone the best way that it could this season for him, but it's also because it's fit. Harmon fit with what Patrick Graham was doing, and the way that the Raiders' defense has been playing this season, I like Deron Harmon a lot as a potential replacement. I mean, look at these numbers last year. 86 tackles, two INTs, five PBUs last season with the Las Vegas Raiders. To me, Deron Harmon fixed a lot of things in the secondary, and it helps out this team a lot. Let's go to another name here that you could potentially look at to be a Roderick Teamer replacement. And again, a lot of the safeties that you're going to see are not so much special teams players, but more of I'm looking for help in the secondary, and I'm also looking for help from a veteran spot that can be that Marcus Peters, Roderick Teamer type of replacement. And this one, I'm going to go with Logan Ryan here, who he played with Patrick Graham from 2020 to 2021. So there is some experience there in a Patrick Graham defense, which if you're going to be added to a team at this point in the season, I do think that that's going to be something to look at. He has started in 121 games throughout his career. So he's got plenty of starting experience. He's going to be able to help some of your younger players out. And the more player coaches you get in the National Football League, I'm a big believer that that makes a big time difference. And then you add Logan Ryan again, who's a, he's a tough dude. Like you ask any teammates that have played with him. He is a really, really tough football player. I think he would fit the type of mentality that Antonio Pierce is trying to bring to the football field and to the practice field on a regular basis. And you need good leaders. You can't have enough good leaders, and that's what Logan Ryan's going to bring to the table. Back in 2021, his final year with Patrick Graham. I'll get it. Not the greatest numbers according to PFF, but a 60.4 overall grade, a solid run defender, which I don't think would be a bad thing. It's decent against the pass rush. Again, I don't really look at that from safety's Coverage at 51.1. If all I need is somebody that can come in and play 10, 15 snaps a game, and maybe you decide to put Logan Ryan in those situations where you know that he's going to have to protect you against the run, I'm okay with that because, let's face it, would you rather have Logan Ryan drop back into coverage or Roger Teamer drop back into coverage? To me, it's I, I, tomato, tomato. I, I don't really care. Both are guys that I don't really want to have to rely on. Let's go to another name here, and man, this is a guy that I really, really wish he could stay healthy because Landon Collins has been able to show that he can be a good safety when he has the ability to show health or uh, the ability to stay healthy. But he's battled multiple injuries the past few seasons, which has really zapped him of his athletic ability, if you will. And he's played for the Giants, he's played for the Commanders, he's never played with Patrick Graham, giggity. But Graham has used a hybrid safety like Collins before. Like, you go back and you look at a lot of the really solid defenses that Patrick Graham has had. You look at, a, you know, a Jabril Peppers is a good name to bring up in mind. Uh, I want to say Julian Love is another name to keep in mind. And, you know, you look at some of the things that Marcus Epps is doing this season. There's no surprise to me that you see a guy like Epps who he's having a good year and he was good with the Philadelphia Eagles. But it's been multiple times that safeties have had some of their best seasons with Graham, and it's because of that versatility. It's because of the scheme that the Raiders try to implement. But he has started in 21 games in the last three seasons is what that's supposed to say. Started 21 games in the last three games, right? Now, 21 games in the last three seasons. To me, though, Landon Collins is another interesting option. You know what, though? I got two more names to bring up here. But if you like this show, guess what? I did the exact same thing yesterday or maybe it's today, either or, Marcus Peters replacements. We put out so many videos, sometimes I forget what days we put them out. But if you like this type of show, I bet you would like our Marcus Peters replacements. That video is going to be available to you all down in the comments and down in the description of today's show. All right, let's go to the next name here. I got P.J. Williams. He's a defensive back, and he can play corner. He can also play safety, and his versatility is ultimately why I decided to put him on the list here. He has started in 34 games throughout his career. I want to say he started in the NFL in 2016, but he's a big dude, right? Like, big guy from a safety standpoint in terms of he looks a lot thicker than I think what his measurables indicate. 
Six foot, about 200 pounds. Last season, 26 tackles, no picks, two PBUs. But it's because of that versatility, which I do think is one of the things that Graham is going to look for that this Raiders defense needs. The final Roderick Teamer replacement is also on another practice squad. It's Eric Rowe as it stands right now. And again, if you sign Eric Rowe, you got to put him on your active 53-man roster, which I think any of the players that I just mentioned, that's what a Roderick Teamer replacement would be. He started in 15 games in 2019 when Graham was the Dolphins defensive coordinator. And Rowe had a, I'd say Rowe's two best seasons of his entire career were 2019 and 2020, both with the Miami Dolphins. And Rowe can also play multiple different positions. If you're looking for the, like, the name that I think makes the most sense of if you're literally trying to replace Roderick Teamer, not trying to upgrade, not trying to downgrade, I think Eric Rowe is probably that dude. Back in 2019 with Patrick Graham, he had an overall PFF grade of 58.9, run defense grade of 56.4, pass rush grade of 56.2, coverage grade of 60.2. Rowe does offer you some ability as on special teams, and he can offer you some ability being a strong safety, being a free safety, play up in the box. He's not as good as what he maybe was a few years ago. He's not all that great now, but here's the thing. Neither really was uh, Roderick Teamer. So those were five free agents, five names to at least keep in mind. Who's somebody that the Raiders should try to replace Roderick Teamer with? Like, is it a free agent like one of the dudes that I mentioned? Is it somebody on a practice squad like a Deron Harmon, like an Eric Rowe? The bottom line is the Raiders have an open roster spot. They have $9 million to spend. And if Champ Kelly and Antonio Pierce want to remain as head coach and GM, they need to do something this offseason. They need to get creative, okay? And maybe it's one of the guys on this list. But please go ahead and let me know. In terms of my Roderick team of replacements, again, the numbers that you see down below are the ages of these players. Nobody's very young, but hey, Deron Harmon, Logan Ryan, both at 32. Landon Collins is the only player currently under the age of 30. And then P.J. Williams and Eric Rowe at 30 and at 31. If you want to stay up to date even more around the Las Vegas Raiders, make sure you hit me up on IG. Make sure you hit me up on Twitter at MitchellRens365. And make sure that you're tuning into our live show on Thursday when the Cowboys and Seahawks play a little Thursday night football. We're going to get a little wild. It's also going to be Jeremy's last show for a little bit because uh, – He's got a bachelor party in Las Vegas to attend to. So if you're ready to turn up Thursday, make sure you tune in to the Raiders Report.